So, hello, hello, everybody. My name is Alisha. So, uh, today I'll be speaking about the pitfalls of uh, infrastructure as code with Kubernetes and how can you actually turn this agile. So, before we start, uh, a little bit about myself, right? So, I, I'm a senior software engineer at EPAM, right? I've been in the industry for around five years. I've actually worked with, uh, you know, lots of technologies. So, I'm myself a back-end developer with specialization in Java, right? But I, I uh, I do tend to do everything, right? So, and I uh, um, do speak Russian and English, so if you would have any, you know, uh, queries after, after the presentation, please don't be afraid to uh, approach me and, and ask uh, any questions, right? And if you want, you can also uh, connect, uh, you know, with me on LinkedIn. Again, I can show you uh, the, the QR code after the presentation as well. And here are some of the companies that I worked here locally. I, I already see a lot of familiar faces here, so um, uh, chances are that you are my ex-colleagues, right? So. Um, now, uh, the, the boring part, right, a little bit about uh, EPAM. So, um, the, uh, EPAM is a multinational company, right? We, we approximately 60K people uh, in 45 countries. We have international environments. I, for example, the only person from Latvia and the OOPS. Uh, uh, and we basically we are uh, having a completely remote work, right? So, we are not required to go to the office. Uh, the, uh, uh, we, uh, as a matter of thing, you know, we don't have office, we have a co-working space in Latvia because nobody really wants to go to the office and, and that's, uh, that's kind of your choice, right? So, we uh, here, well, we, we, we were working since 1993, right? So, we're a quite stable company and uh, in Latvia, we're around, you know, 100 people, uh, uh, primarily senior, but we again looking for curious minds and if you would want to apply, you can go to I'm Curious Latvia and or you can just follow this link and again I can share it if you want after the presentation. So what we're going to talk to you know today about. So I will you know present you a couple of client cases, right? So I've I've interviewed about a dozen you know uh, people uh, before this and uh, just you know picked up a couple of interesting products uh, to go over, right? Uh, because of the I can't disclose the names of course, but I can at least describe what the product is. And we will uh, look into how you can actually, you know, use Terraform with Kubernetes, right? We'll cover some uh, uh, setups that you can actually have in the cloud, some uh, uh, aspects of service mesh and how we actually, you know, usually use it. And we'll cover a little bit of uh, how we can deploy a gateway, you know, and why can't you, for example, use an ingress. And uh, hopefully we'll also go over the demo, right? So uh, uh, the client case studies, right? So uh, before we go there, there is... Um, uh, a, a terminology that I use in some of the slides, so if you would be interested, there is a north to south and east to west traffic. So north to south basically means from internet to your services to, you know, to the, to the bottom, right? The databases, you know, other services, etc. While east to west means you, you do communication between the clusters. So interesting thing. Okay, so the first client, it's uh, uh, an automotive industry. It's uh, uh, one of the largest producers of the cars in Europe, right? Uh, they have a, an IoT platform that basically uh, provides some interesting features like self-service, right? Some uh, metrics like if you need to change, for example, fuel or, uh, you know, which shows you mileage, some software updates for the cars and, and et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, the, you know, from the challenges side, the, when the client approached us, they, they were actually not innovating. They were, uh, and all of those things, uh, it was quite a while ago, but still all of those things came from the United States, right? So, uh, Europe was not really famous for, for its self-service portals for the cars, right? And the uh, ecosystem ex was expected to be highly available. It was not required, right? But it was expected it will be, you know, at some point you will have a load. Um, what they were looking for, because, because of their size, they were looking for, at least for this product, right? They, they were looking for the centralized and independent solution. So something they could deploy, right? But other teams wouldn't really interact, let's say, with infrastructure teams. So they wanted to have, for example, a gateway, right? Or a, a Kubernetes cluster that is shared and you deploy it and you basically, you know, don't care about, you know, others, right? right? They do some, basically, uh, authorization, but uh, otherwise it's, it's quite independent. They also had, uh, uh, I believe with POC, if I, uh, if I recall it correctly, they had observability issues. So uh, the service that they were calling was basically timing out, right? It was not, uh, it was returning around, you know, uh, uh, the latency was around 10 seconds. So they couldn't figure out why, right? Why? Because there, there was a chain of services that was called and they couldn't really know why exactly that happens. And also due to the nature of this actually platform, you could actually deploy, you know, some set of services separately because they had eight clusters globally, right? And if you would deploy, for example, 20 services in each cluster, at least, at least with one replica, you would already have 160 services, which is kind of hard to maintain. So the second one is actually also one of the largest uh, global uh, smart device manufacturers, right? So they also have a hybrid of uh, an IoT platform. And uh, sorry, I, I just, it just happened that, you know, people from IoT replied to my emails. So, um, um, and uh, basically, um, uh, they have a very interesting platform. So whenever they release a new series of the phones, they actually do a couple of, 
um, let's say, clicks, right? And you basically, you know, get everything set up for it, right? You have a um, uh, uh, basically a uh, uh, repository for software updates. You have a, a databases that are required for the for the you know for the series of the phones. Let's say all of that basically comes up. You don't really have to do anything, right? It's an interesting product. There was a requirement in, in case of let's say load or partial cluster failure. They wanted to route some of the traffic to other you know clusters. So because they had multiple copies in different regions and continents as well. So um, also due to the nature of IoT, right? Because the way um, those devices operate, they actually they don't rely on the standard protocols. So they wanted more fine-grained control over the uh, how you actually you know receive the traffic, how you decode it, and, and etc. So they wanted you know something better than just ingress. They also wanted, uh, so this is an interesting thing, you know, because I was asking about some of the features of Emissary Gateway that we'll actually go through today. And I was, uh, you know, asking if, if you actually was looking into something, you know, decentralized with this solution because they were using this. Um, and they actually, uh, you know, they didn't mention this as a, as a, as a kind of, um, you know, uh, as a requirement. But when I started asking about it, they said, yes, that was actually something that really helps. So it's uh, one of the things you will look at. And uh, the system was, had to be highly available uh, because of the load. So where we get right with this, uh, so Kubernetes can solve you know, some of the questions. So high availability, it, Kubernetes can do it, right? But how do you do things like multi-cluster setup, right? Uh, how do you do you know, better control at the gateway? So, um, um, but before we do that, let's first check how you actually do set up Kubernetes on the cloud provider. So one of the, you know, one of the ways you could do it, you can do it in a cloud native way, right? So you can have a a uh, set of services right in the, in a GCP, so we can have a, a messaging, right? A, a, a monitoring tools. You can have a uh, you know, uh, for example, a computer engine, which is uh, uh, equivalent of EC2 instances in AWS, right? With a mix of your cluster, and and then you basically you know create maybe a shared VPC and and basically do the setup. So it's very um, so one of the perks of this setup is that you actually have you know very um, convenient uh, managed uh, system with no overhead, right? It's 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 one of the selling points. You do get relatively limited control of the, you know, of the over the product. So if you if you need some feature, you have any bug, right? You even if you have a premium subscription with the cloud provider, it, it won't be coming soon. So we just need to realize it. Um, generally, we have a quite you know uh, highly available workforce, right? So uh, uh, you know cloud certifications and, and just general cloud awareness is actually rising. So we do have a, a very good pool of candidates here. Uh, it's has a much more flexible cost model. Not, it's not always cheaper, but it's very flexible in terms of, right, uh, you know, how do you uh, uh, do, you know, uh, cost management. And it's relatively stable and reliable. So the second way, you actually do more Kubernetes native, right? So you can't really do entirely Kubernetes native. So because, you know, there will be some services like DNS that you have to have outside of Kubernetes cluster. But you can deploy a lot of things like, you know, messaging queues, for example, inside the cluster. You can deploy uh, uh, the gateways inside the cluster. You can deploy many, many things inside the cluster. So this is generally, you know, harder. So if you, you know, if you don't really need it, don't do it. It's it's not a requirement, right? So um, uh, the way, basically, uh, 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 you know, one of the perks here is that you actually get a lot of control, right? So you can, for example, uh, uh, declare, you know, uh, deploy your own gateway, and you can say, you know, I can configure this gateway in such a way that it will process the traffic, right? If we were speaking about, uh, let's say, binary traffic, right, MQTT, you can actually decode it at the gateway level, and you can't really do it with with the serverless, you know, uh, solutions like <clears throat> from AWS. It's uh, uh, it's much more expensive, right? Because remember, you're not only paying for the uh, for the you know uh, for the cluster, you're paying for the actually you know people and uh, finding a, a Kubernetes genius that also understands how Prometheus works, right? That also understands how Mr. Ingress works. It's 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 kind of costly, so you kind of have to uh, consider this as well. Um, fun fact, right? About uh, um, uh, stability. I've actually while I was preparing for this presentation, I was uh, uh, I've tried to deploy something that I had like developed two years ago. Uh, Terraform failed. But Kubernetes applied it's, uh, when I when I created a cluster, right? So it's, uh, you actually get a, back, uh, a backwards uh, compatibility with, with the Kubernetes, which is an interesting thing. Okay, so uh, let's quickly go with, you know to the Terraform and actually see how, how we deploy it. But before we do that, does anybody you know here wants to know what's Terraform? Like, do you do you need an explanation? Just please raise your hand. Okay, we have a couple of guys. Okay, just um, I, I was I was hoping that we will skip it, right? But. Uh, So for this demo, right? So basically, uh, Terraform is, is kind of uh, has its own language, right? Uh, you declare uh, you know a couple of files. You, you uh, for this demo, it just would be enough if you would know this, right? So you declare a provider. Let's say you need an AWS uh, provider, right? You want to deploy to AWS. 
So declare a provider, you declare a version, you configure it with the provider. Sometimes uh, you need to provide credentials, but generally, if, if we're speaking about the local setup, you would have uh, you know things like credentials in your let's say that AWS file, right? So um, in my case, it's uh, GCP. It, it basically has it there as well. Then you declare a resource, right? Which is pro, uh, in, in this case is ACL actually for S3 bucket. I was I was I was thinking it was S3 bucket, but it's ACL, right? So, and then you can when you declare this resource, right? If if there are any different um, uh, remote states, right? And the state is, is actually how the Terraform understands what you actually deployed, right? You can you can uh, if it's in a different state, you can auto wire it. Otherwise, you can actually, as you can see below, just reference the uh, the IRN or ID as as, as it's called in AWS, right? So you basically uh, would have some additional uh, you know other things in, in the object. So I hope it, it at least it, you know a very short presentation of what Terraform is, but I hope it did help. So with the with the Terraform, right? Um, uh, there is a Kubernetes provider, and uh, a quick uh, well before before the question, right? So the Terraform provider uses actually an HCL object, right? So in, in, in Kubernetes generally use YAML files, but the Kubernetes provider uses uh, basically. Uh, HCL objects. There is a kubectl that allows you to apply YAMLs, but it's not HashiCorp official. And sometimes, you know, I, I have personally had, you know, a couple of times problems with not having official uh, providers, and just, you know, people just don't like it, especially in big companies. So, and, and just, you know, fun fact: if you do like YAML more than this, please raise your hand. It's a very interesting. Like, I, I don't really understand why you would want, you know, Terraform HCL objects. But maybe I asked it differently. You know, maybe I should have asked, do you like, you know, do you, do you, do you like, you know, uh, don't like this? But uh, let's see. So basically, you know, um, one of the interesting things is that you actually can deploy uh, uh, with the, uh, 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 there is a feature to actually add the annotations and labels to the resources, which is required for installation, for example, of a service mesh, which will go over it, right? But the, um, the problem here is that, for example, if you want to deploy, uh, I'm sorry, if you want to add an annotation to a deployment, and on a template level, it won't be possible because it will only add it on the, uh, on the deployment metadata. There is also uh, an interesting thing, uh, uh, such as Kubernetes manifest and resources, therefore um, ideal for custom source definitions, right? For example, if something is, uh, um, let's say, not provided by default in Kubernetes, and Kubernetes, by the way, allows you to declare custom resources, this is something you can do. So as, as another solution, there is also a Terraform Helm provider, right? Um, it actually does allow you to, uh, to use uh, YAML files, right, to, to some degree. Uh, you can use local charts as well, but there is a small problem with this, right? So uh, the problem is, is that actually uh, Helm doesn't, you know, by itself um, know about any changes that you do within the Helm chart. So you would have to do a couple, you know, of interesting tricks. You can, for example, calculate a hash within the Terraform to figure out uh, uh, whether you know something has changed for for local you know for um, a local chart, so you can for example do this the same thing on the commit IDs from the repositories. So um, interesting, and you can actually have it uh, a very convenient thing to you know to have and and, and share. Okay, the service mesh. So I uh, does anybody here does anybody here please uh, knows what the service mesh is? Okay, not not many, but we can go right over it. So. Uh, before we go there, right? So um, I'm very sorry for the way you know I, I'm not the best at, at drawing you know diagrams, but there is two two types of clusters, right? Synchronous and asynchronous clusters. So within a synchronous clusters, you generally have a message broker that basically handles the communication, and it's basically a pool-based uh, uh, you know um, um, environment where services actually pull uh, the you know the the work when, when they can, right? And if you, if they can't, they just scale and then pull. Um, um, uh, them on basically on, on availability, right? So it's highly resilient. There are some issues with this setup, but uh, generally you wouldn't really want to use service mesh because service mesh was designed to be used with the synchronous models, right? Where you have basically a mess, right? Where there are like, you know, tons of services that depend on each other. And uh, uh, it's also actually quite a lot of interesting problems, which will, you know, we'll go over those. But um, uh, just to give you an insight, right? For example, if let's say service A is um, very slow at responding, right? Where could be the problem? Is it service G that it actually you know, slows it down? Maybe it's service C, or maybe it's actually service E, right? So you never know. So it's an a interesting problem. So there are a couple of things, right? So um, some of the um, things you probably might know, right? I think one of the, uh, what, one of the things that comes to my, uh, to my mind right away was the service mesh that actually does TLS. It encrypts communication between the services. Uh, quite easy, right of the, out of the box, you just need to provide certificates. And even some service meshes, they actually have a extensions that allow you to generate those um, you know, out, of the, you know, out of the box without any configuration. 
Uh, they do also have an interesting feature of circuit breaking, right? So if, if somebody here from, from Java world probably have heard of Netflix, Netflix uh, uh, Hystrix, right? But uh, which, which probably has already been deprecated and they, I believe, suggest to use resilience for J. But you generally do these things now in service mesh. It's, uh, it's a new trend. Another thing that they actually added quite recently is actually cross-cluster discovery. So the emissary ingress also supports this, and uh, I, I won't be showing this today, but uh, it's, it's actually a very convenient way. You just uh, uh, do some configuration in one cluster and another, you just need to share the certificates. And it actually shares all, the, all of the services right, into separate clusters. So they are automatically discovered. And, you, and it's very easy and especially very convenient in the cases when you need to uh, uh, basically have uh, a shared context. right? Okay, so I've chosen Linkert, right? So I've chosen Linkert uh, for a very sp specific reason. It's very simple to install, right? So the uh, DSTO is probably much more flexible solution. It has much more and, and better features, right? But uh, you know, with Linkert for a demo, I think it's, it's totally fine. I, I hope you would, you would excuse me, right? So finally, the, the gateway. So the gateway is uh, another crucial piece, right? Um, why you probably wouldn't use the ingress, right? Um, so the problem with ingress is ingress is actually at uh, is a level seven uh, uh, in the uh, basically network model, right? What you sometimes want is to have level four, for example, right? And and there you would want to have uh, support for let's say TLS termination, you know, such things like uh, you know rate limiting, um, you know, support for different protocols, and and they don't really come with ingress. And you, you, you would probably have to you know, do a lot of things, uh, like you know, putting a, a load balancer service, right? Or, or probably doing uh, you know, some other interesting things. I, I do believe that some, uh, I actually sure that some of the cloud you know, platforms, they provide extensions to the ingresses, right? With some annotations and other configurations that actually can do those things, but then you basically becoming bound to the, to the provider. So the gateway is some, somewhat essential if you want to um, have you know, somewhat independent setup, but still you know, powerful enough. So um, I've chosen the Mystery Ingress, right? I won't show you logos, but I, I, I will do show you a demo, right? So the Mystery Ingress is actually quite easy to set up. So there are, um, there are more than, of course, three resources, but, but still. Uh, there is a uh, listener resource, right? There is a host and a mapping. So the, um, the, the host is not necessary. So we can omit it. The host basically tells you that you, know, you want to restrict the traffic that comes in to a specific host. And it basically will, will not uh, uh, allow any traffic that doesn't respond to the host. You can also do the you know, match with mapping and, and the labels, right? So we can say I want this particular this host to, to a particular that uh, mapping. But we won't also do that because, I, again, I omitted the host. Uh, in the listener, you just say, you know, I'm waiting for uh, uh, HTTP, for example, traffic on the port 8080, right? And uh, uh, don't forget that you still have to expose it through the service because it's the configuration of the gateway. It's something you would have to do. And the mapping is basically says, you know, for this route, I want to call the service. So there is, there is a, you know, a syntax there. You could, you could utilize it if you want. Um, also quite easy. So we finally got to the demo time. So maybe before the demo, any, any questions? No? OK, great. Uh, yeah, actually, before before showing this, I, I want to show you. I've uh, you know provisioned the cluster because it takes around 20 minutes to provision the cluster. I didn't want to do it uh, um, uh, you know beforehand. So we do have actually cluster, I believe. Oh dear, <laughs> <laughs> internet. <laughs> I love it. So I, my mom told me never use a public you know Wi-Fi. So let's let's hope it will connect, right? So we do have a, a single node cluster, right? In uh, it's a zonal cluster in Europe West One B. I, I'm using, by the way, Google Cloud. If uh, uh, it says actually there, that is Google Cloud. Yeah. Um, so we don't have any workloads. We don't have any services. It's uh, it's a purely you know. Uh, empty cluster and before we start I will do Terraform apply because it takes time to actually apply things um, Do you by the way do you see text do you, do you want me to do it bigger if you do please raise your hand? Okay, okay there are a couple of a couple of guys, but I, I really hope It's gonna work so um, Right oh. So inconvenient actually There it is So while we do the apply, 
let's go through the uh, through the structure of the project. So I, I won't go over the uh, AR. AR basically is artifact registry, right? I didn't actually show you, but it's a repository for Docker, right? And I also provision the cluster. So it's a, a Terraform resources. What I really want to go over is actually the um, uh, the uh, resources for the linker and the uh, emissary. So. Um, if we will go basically to the main declaration, I think it's too big now. But basically, um, from um, from perspective, right, from the providers, I do have just Google, Kubernetes, and Helm, right? I do have, a, I did set up backend on basically cloud storage. I, I the, and again, the backend for those maybe who doesn't know, it's basically just a, a way, um, a place for uh, for Terraform to store the uh, uh, basically conf how to say it correctly, the metadata about what resources were created, right? So this is the configuration of the providers, right? So I do uh, auto-wire, uh, for example, Google Client Config. That's basically to get credentials to the cluster and also auto-wiring some cluster configuration um, to uh, to get uh, things like, you know, cluster certificates, right? So and, and that's basically what I'm doing here, right? I'm passing the token, I'm passing the, uh, 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 you know, certificates to connect to the cluster, and uh, uh, the same I'm doing basically for Helm, right? So it's quite simple. Um, and here I just need to say yes, right, so. Okay, and uh, then we have a TLS. TLS, so we need TLS uh, for the um, for the linker. There is, I, I won't go over it because it's a standard uh, Terraform uh, 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 resources that you basically, you don't really need to declare even. So it's again, um, uh, pretty straightforward. It just creates uh, a pair of, of certificates that we will pass to the linker and I will actually show you. So the linker is actually a little bit more interesting. So we have, um, we have a couple of uh, Helm releases for the linker, right? So we have, I've, I'm declaring here a repository saying it's, uh, you know, um, use linker stable. I have linker 2, version 2.11.4. You know, uh, uh, and then we're passing the certificates that we were creating in the TLS, right? And we're also installing linker Vs. Linker Vs is basically a, uh, it's analog of a dashboard. For example, if, if some of you know, it's uh, equivalent to a Stereo dashboard. So um, uh, interesting thing. We will actually look into it as soon as the linker will be installed. And then we have an emissary. So for the emissary, I decided to be, you know, to do it a little bit more um, uh, in, how to say it correctly, in more customizable way. So I downloaded a lot of things, right? I did, didn't really use the default Helm repositories. So, um, and, uh, and of course, before actually, you know, doing anything, I'm pre-creating Linkert uh, namespace, right? So because as, as you remember, the uh, um, uh, 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 Kubernetes uh, provider didn't really have the possibility to uh, uh, do a very convenient, you know, an annotation mapping. You could do it still, but nevertheless, I've decided to pre-create it just easier and uh, put the annotation. This is something you need to tell to, you know, to the linker that it uh, needs to inject there, the sidecars. Sidecars is basically a, a proxy that uh, uh, a service mesh uses to actually do all those cool things. And then we do uh, install a uh, first thing for emissary. We install custom resource definitions, and then we install the, um, uh, the emissary itself. So remember the thing that I've told you, right? That uh, um, uh, the Helm, Helm basically release a resource in Terraform doesn't really detect any changes. So you have to uh, do a, a dirty trick, right? As I, as I call it, um, dirty hack. So you're basically saying, you know, we are collecting a hash of all the files. Uh, in the uh, in the you know uh, uh, in in my case it's basically just local file system and you just depend them right it's uh, again uh, you can just Google it it's it's there in a, in a GitHub so we can do it and um, yeah finally you basically just do the configuration so while it still creating the linker, right? And it's actually still creating the emissary and linker base, right? Let's go over the, uh, maybe the emissary. So CRDS, right? It's it's uh, just one big YAML file with custom resource definitions. As a matter of fact, I can open it, but it's just gibberish, right? It just has some, uh, you know, some uh, uh, resource definitions that you could use, but nothing really more, right? And then we do have uh, emissary itself. So. Uh, Again, one of the reasons why I wanted to actually have it here is because I also can, you know, uh, customize it and say, you know, on, on the deployment level, I want to actually put some Linkert inject annotations. So this is something you could do. Um, it's um, again, and it's uh, it's actually a, a better practice to do it this way rather than doing it through the Terraform. Okay. Um, Another thing, right, I'm exposing the dashboard. So um, this is basically an emissary ingress custom mapping, right? And I'm basically telling it, you know, there is a um, linker basically this service, right? I want to have it. 
Um, uh, uh, I'm telling that there is there, there will be this host, and actually we'll also show, showcase you uh, that actually you can do it with the with the host header, and uh, uh, so to say imitate that uh, this DNS name. Uh, this configuration again is available on Linkert. I will go over it, uh, but again. Uh, it's something that uh, uh, you could d definitely check in documentation. And the listener, again, we're basically saying that, you know, I want to listen on 8080. Um, yeah, that's quite straightforward. Okay, so we, as we, as we can see, basically, the, uh, we got the uh, service mesh installed. So uh, I think it took, you know, around a minute something, right? I, I, at least I think. So if we will, uh, I need to exit the presentation mode, right? So if we will go now to the, to the GCP, we actually and we'll refresh. We now have basically a set of services, right? Uh, uh, the the emissary deployments, uh, 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 Grafana that comes by the way out of the box, right? Uh, some Prometheus uh, and, uh, and other interesting things. Um, we do have this thing, right? So this is basically the load balancer uh, uh, endpoint uh, of type load balancer from the emissary gateway, right? So you, you would generally want to change it, but uh, it's another story, right? You might want to change it to the node port uh, if you would want to, um, let's say, um, uh, utilize a you know, load balancer before the, the uh, of level four, before the, the gateway itself. So I do have here a header, right? So devclub uh, example.com. So the one that I've used specifically for a dashboard. So if I will try and enter now, we do actually get a very nice and interesting dashboard from the Linkert. And uh, now another thing that I wanted to do, right? So now we have basically everything set up. It was quite quite easy. Now let's try and do actually, you know, create a, a service and deploy it to the um, to the to the Linkert and, and to the cluster, I'm sorry, and see uh, actually how we can do it. So I will use Spring. I hope if you you wouldn't mind. So Right, we would need web, and we we'll probably need a templating engine. Okay, let's do Gradle. Okay, we need a name, guys. Can can somebody shout an interesting name? Dev Club. Dev Club. <laughs> okay, uh, that was uh, that was interesting, right? Okay. Um, I will. I will, uh, guys. I will. Uh, is, is it okay if I will put this because I need two hands? Otherwise, I will do it very slowly. I will shout if, if that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Did somebody say no? <laughs> right, so. Yes, but I still want to use the website. So uh, before, it's actually importing. So the IntelliJ imports now the, the project. So, but while it imports, let's quickly create a Docker file, right? And I really like that my uh, PC is so slow. Come on. There it is. So this is basically a very simple Docker file, right? All we do, basically, we're expecting to collect, let me turn on the microphone, uh, right? So we're expecting, basically, a boot jar um, in the lips. Uh, that's standard the output, right? And um, uh, while it still does import, let me quickly create here a folder, right? Because we are running out of time. Kubernetes, uh, for example, right? I will use single file, guys. I didn't, I'm sorry, I didn't prepare CDCIs, right? I know that's CDCI conference, but I will just do kubectl apply because, again, it's faster and, uh, right, for example. So it still does importing. Okay, while it does import, so guys, what do you think we would need to do the deployment, right, from what, what you actually saw? Come on, ideas. Come on, guys. Think about where you would deploy, where you would deploy, uh, this is Kubernetes context, where you would deploy a, uh, let's say, deployment and a service. Namespace, come on. <laughs> yes, right, so let's create a namespace. Let's say it's Dev, uh, uh, Dev Club demo, right? So we would also need to put an annotation there. Uh, very interesting. Come on. Well, no. So 
So basically, you need this annotation for to tell Linker that you want to inject right into this namespace. Uh, otherwise, you would probably have to do it on a easy deployment, which is not really convenient, right? Uh, let me actually do it this way, right? Oops. So then we'll use deployment, uh, right? So we'll say that would be a uh, uh, I don't know a uh, dev demo deployment, right? So uh, image image we'll have to add later, and the namespace. Yeah, I, I, I always tend to forget to add that. Uh, so we'll say namespace would be what we actually named it. Uh, so interesting, funny funny part here is that if you do uh, like a typo, it won't work, right? And then we need a service, service to expose it, right? So the service we could name, I don't know, uh, how, how did we actually name dev, dev demo? I, I said, okay, dev demo service, right? And uh, seems to be about right. Uh, we could actually, let's write here port 80, and we'll target it to 8080, right? And probably we'd want to use a, a cluster IP here. Okay, I hope I didn't make any typos while it's being imported. So another thing that you might wanna do here, right? Because you wanna expose it from the um, from the mystery ingress, right? And it's something, just imagine if I'm in a different team, right? You would probably want to use a mapping. So uh, you can use basically this mapping, let's say, you know, uh, 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 oops. So let's say prefix would be up. Right, the method we actually wouldn't need. Um, service, uh, how did we name our service? It's a dev demo service. Dev demo. Host, we can say any, right? Any host. Host we write will probably not need. So here, uh, here would say, um, so it would be uh, any, right, any, any letter with any amount, right? So and probably would want to have a slash afterwards, yeah. So right, and the timeouts we probably won't need. So we'll remove this. We won't need this and we won't need this. So basically what we're telling here is that actually hey listen uh, on basically up right uh, on, on the pass up right do um, uh, do it for every host and redirect it to the to the same namespace on dev demo service um, do uh, uh, basically uh, oh it's finally got imported so and basically do replace it eventually to the uh, uh, from from basically this regex to um, uh, to the one that we you know substitute to so I think it was was it target port target port okay let me quickly check. There is something red here as well. Ah, image we'll, we will add, right? So um, before we do that, so let me quickly say that we'll have a controller, right? Um, let's create a request mapping. So request mapping basically tells you you want to do something on this pass, right? So we'll say um, what what we would we'll say. Let's let's do it. You know, throw error. So many typos. If you if you do have an alternative to the to the you know exception error, please tell me. Uh, oops. So I'm I want to create three endpoints, right? One that basically does a. Um, uh, you know, normal template, and we'll create a template in a minute, right? A second will basically do it with a delay, and third will just throw an error, and we'll basically see all of that in the service mesh. Uh, quite interesting. No. Oh, forgetting that I didn't declare a method.
and by the way guys if you see any issues right any errors and typos do let me know because eventually it will not work right if I missed something uh, true but I want also to do a response body here uh, for there okay so uh, and we want to do a actually wait right so it would also be get oh okay so and that would be get page so uh, wait a second that was uh, we wanted to do wait yeah so that would be wait right so we also return here a example page and let's wait for let's say five seconds right so just a second and here right we want to actually I wanted to do it here but you know let's actually do for the weight yes you're right let's do a body here so we want to say I hate caps lock okay so respond body right and we will actually return here a slightly uh, type let's say uh, string right Okay, good. So let's quickly launch it. Double check that it works, right? Because it, it may not work. Ah, we actually forgot. That's the thing. We forgot to do the template. So it's the funny part, right? It's the HTML file. Um, okay. Um, fine. Let's leave the title and in the body. Okay, guys, any, any sentences? Come on. <laughs> Out of everything, right? <laughs> okay, let's, let's just do a hello world dev club, just, just in case, right? Okay, uh, I think I need to restart it. Uh, I'm not sure if it will catch the change. Okay, it started, right? Let's go to the... Uh, localhost 8080 so first one was the example right i believe so if we'll do oh dear did we name it ex example did i name it example example demo. did i did i really name it demo no i, I return example yeah, ah yeah so here it is right um <laughs> <laughs> we didn't we didn't deploy it yet right so uh I think the second was one was throw error, right? And we can see that it's actually 500. Um, it's already better. And the third one was wait, right? So the wait is supposed to return something. Uh, it's supposed to return a string. So if we'll do wait, right? It, as you can see, it's still loading. It's still loading. Yes, and there it is, returns waited. OK, great. It's, uh, we, we're halfway done. So what we want to do now, I, I will quickly launch uh, the uh, boot jar. So it basically will pack our application and, and we will build it with the Docker. So uh, where's the terminal? Right, so. Um, so, yeah, um, I don't have a, like a, a colorful uh, terminal, so sorry for that, for, for the gibberish. Uh, while it does it, I will quickly check the artifact uh, repository because I forgot, there it is, the, the pass, right? So. True, true, but I I decided to go hard way, right? So, okay, uh, let's do, right, so we'll, uh, let's say demo, I, I, I feel I will regret because like the name is too long, right? So let's, let's say it will be version one, right? Okay. 
By the way, it's a good moment to ask questions, right? So because we're waiting. What web server are you running there? Server? It's a local machine. I'm, I'm doing it on Google Cloud. So the, the registry itself on the cloud. Now I forgot what I wanted to do. <laughs> uh, okay, let's do Docker push, right? Yes. Uh, somebody said, I think somebody said push. Thank you. Uh, how did we call it? demo, I think, app version one? I, I hope, I really hope it was that. So, and so we wouldn't miss it, right? Ah. The push refers to repository. Ta -ta 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 -ta. I think I misnamed, yeah, so uh, it was demo dev club app version one, yep, so I have to. I, okay, my terminal doesn't really like me. Uh, let me quickly grab that again. All right, so it was demo up. Demo. <laughs> you see, I, I said that I will regret that name. So it was dev club demo up, dev club demo up. So it was dev club. <laughs> Don't confuse me. Uh, oh. Right? Yeah. No. No? Docker image ls, pipe, grab, and name. You could. I don't like to grab. Just a second. I, I want to check if I've correctly uh, actually built it. I Just let me. So, to your request. Ah, there it is. Yeah, so uh, we didn't. We, we wanna. So the problem here is that we actually want to build the image with the same name as a repository. Otherwise, you won't be able to push it, right? So, uh, so it will be Docker te and uh, build, right? And by the way, this is uh, GitHub Bash. I have no idea, to be honest, how it would behave with Grab. So I haven't tried it here. Finally, right? It's working. So, and while it, you know, it does it. So, uh, there are two two tries that I tried actually before, just to to be sure that it's working, right? Um, any questions? Meanwhile, no. Yes. Uh, that was open GDK 17, I think. Okay, so while it does it, remember we had to put the uh, image into the deployment. So there it goes. So this is basically this part is ready to be applied. Uh, I, let's just wait for it to be pushed, right? So I'm I'm using the hotspot. Maybe that's why it's slow. Um, but also it could be slow because it's a Docker. Java is not slow. Come on. Yes. Uh, the labels, so it's dev demo deployment, the service, the service where's the service. You actually right. You are well right. If you wouldn't tell me, we would probably try to figure out why it doesn't work. So, thank you. Good. So it's it's probably being deployed, right? Let me let me refresh. So we do have it here now in, in artifact registry. Now if I will do basically, uh, it's uh, in, in basically, yep, so cube CTL, right? It's uh, Kubernetes, I think it should do fine. <laughs> okay, great. So it's basically being uh, deployed, right? Let me quickly, Let's go to the to the cluster, right? So in the cluster, before we refresh, we'll probably have a cluster IP deployment already with one pod, right? Map to it. Uh, yep. So it's still starting up. So.
serving pots that do not match. I, I really like it, right? So there, there has been probably a mistake with the mapping. Ah, we deployed in the default namespace. Silly me. Did I forget to add a namespace to the service? Yes, I did. How did we name it, right? So, uh, where's the, there it is. Come on. It for some reason created a second service, which I really like. Uh, once, once again, yes, it's, it should be on the same namespace. So we do have um, now the mapping, right? So uh, the mapping was uh, the, the the thing that I forgot about mapping. You have to actually specify the uh, uh, the names. I'm sorry, the namespace as well here, right? So you, this is something I didn't do. Uh, this is basically needed for for it to work, right? So now theoretically, right? Because we have a pod served. If I will go to the uh, yeah, I was, I was wondering why it's actually, you know, like, uh, what was it, was it, I think it was demo, right? Yeah. But it wasn't demo, it was something else probably, <laughs> was it? Aha, uh -huh, demo. Funny thing, right? Uh, another quick solution. So I think this won't be needed, right? No, no, the, the namespace, it's totally fine. It's probably now, you, you see the problem now is that we actually can access it from the load balancer in the missing address, right? So the problem is probably with my configuration in the routing. So I either shouldn't have put in a slash, or maybe I shouldn't have used the buttons, just a second. Right, so now, there it is. I, uh, so the thing that I did, right, I've removed the slash. So uh, from here, I, I created a regex, but I, um, again, didn't move it. So the, the reason why I actually wanted to do this, right, uh, to show you the uh, um, interesting feature of the linker is that actually now we have this Dev Club demo, right, up that is, um, uh, that you actually can, you know, uh, see here. So the interesting thing is that you actually can see here the latency of the services. You can see the connected services. You can see everything that is basically, you know, um, um, comes in and goes out. So for example, here, if I will go to the, uh, I believe we had like, uh, was it throw error, right? Throw. Oh, wait. Where did I had that, the other part? There it is. Thank you again. <laughs> Right, so now if I will do it a couple of times, right? Let's let's do it more, right? And if I will go back again to the uh, to the uh, other browser, I, I think it was where was it? Ah, there it was. So here, if if we will basically come on, I didn't add the tab, so we have to wait. So it has to add the tab. It's another sidecar to basically monitor, right? Let me do it again. So if I will theoretically go here, you can see the success rate here is zero, but it should also update the success rate here. Oh, there it is, right? So, and, and you basically see that something is wrong with the service. You can also do a lot of interesting things like the bugs and other things here. You can basically, um, if I would, I remember I've created a page with the latency. So if I would probably use it a couple of times, uh, the, the latency of the duration would be two milliseconds. It will be more. But because that just uh, hint me, you know, that the, the time is running out, right? So uh, do you have any questions? We probably will finish here. Uh, maybe anything. Anything you want to ask now? What is the ambassador? Ambassador is the gateway. <laughs> I didn't put the picture. So this is a gateway that you actually put inside the, um, uh, basically, uh, inside your cluster, right? So we do have a couple of deployments here. So it does deploy it to the uh, emissary ingress namespace. Um, ambassador, so just a little bit of confusion. Ambassador is the old name of the emissary ingress gateway. So they've donated, uh, they separated some parts of the ambassador, made it basically a open source project. And uh, uh, I, I believe that the commercial now version of, of the ambassador gateway is, is called the edge stack. But it, before it was called ambassador. So I, I, if I, you know, sometimes telling ambassador and sometimes emissary, sorry for that, but here, here it goes. So here's you have like your uh, uh, basically set of emissary uh, uh, deployments uh, with some uh, basically dashboards that you could expose by the way in Ingress admin and other things. So um, yeah, anything maybe else, yes? Uh, if you log into the container and for example, call out from it to outside, uh, we get something. 
Uh, yes, so you could you could do that in uh, I in Istio, for example. I, again, I'm not pretty much sure how you could do it on uh, on Linkers, but in Istio you could declare actually a grass resource annotated with basically a couple of interesting things, and it will actually show you where it goes. So yes, it is possible. Okay, I guess that's that's it, right? Yeah. One, can you can you say it louder? Ah, supported. So it's uh, it does support basically uh, uh, everything that is based on TCP. So I I do know that it actually uh, um, it might support UDP, but I'm not sure about it, right? But, but if, if we are talking about uh, you know TCP, so you, you basically get all other interesting things like HTTP2 with gRPC, with uh, uh, you know things like MQTT and uh, yeah, app. So full full set of things. Uh, you could actually there is an interesting thing that you can add plugins to it, so you can customize it if you want. So it does support some extension. Yes. Uh, did you try to measure the performance impact? <laughs> Uh, no, but I can tell you. So I, uh, because uh, again, this is not the stack that we exactly use at my project. But I was uh, because I was interviewing other people. They said it's it's not really a problem. So one of the interesting things was this: is that actually Mr. Ingress is on based on Envoy, and Linkert uses its own uh, um, sidecar. So you might, when you do a tap, so you, when you do a tap on a service, I do have three instances. So you sometimes might actually see uh, you know uh, three sidecars uh, basically in a pod, right? So if we, if we will go deeper there, so um, you will have basically three for uh, for Envoy and one for Linkerd, and they actually have almost zero uh, uh, you know performance impact. So it's uh, at least that's that's how they you know uh, say it. So almost nothing. Okay. Anything else? Maybe no. And in Amazon, yes. it's called Atmos, right? Uh, y uh, yes. So there is also a cloud armor. There is, uh, I think, how they call it. There is, there is solutions uh, here and there. The, the thing is that those solutions they are um, not as flexible as this, right? So you can customize it as you want. You can add extensions. I'm not sure exactly if you can do it with those solutions. Okay, then I guess that's it, right? If you would want, and by the way, just a side note, this is not production setup. I've, I had a slide, but if you want, I can also uh, explain in person why you can't really use this by default. Uh, they, they, Likert likes to say that it's production ready, but it's not, right? So. Okay. Okay. Yep. Thank you.